MIA, a story by user going anywhere but here. An addition to the Jenkins verse, created by user Hambone. Chapter 2 Profiling. Date point four years, ten months, three weeks, and two days after Vancouver. Age seventy years. Height and weight. 153 pounds, at least according to my bathroom scale. Almost 5'10". So 5'9", then. Any pre-existing conditions? Diabetes, type 2. All right. Profession. Any other professions in your life? I was a truck driver back in the Army. Went to Vietnam, same as anyone else. Didn't last long, though. Were you injured? It doesn't mention your service in your file. Didn't think you wanted back that far. But yeah, took some shrapnel to the head. Nothing really serious, though. It healed fine after a while. Still, I was gonna need to wear bandages for a while, so they sent me home. Hence not being a truck driver for too long. The woman behind the large desk had started typing every time he had answered a question. Ominously, she'd typed for rather a long time when he told her he was diabetic much longer than was necessary to type in a three-word answer. He wasn't sure why these questions were necessary, either. He'd answered all of them on the applications she had in a folder right in front of her. For the first time since the questions began, the middle-aged woman behind the desk named Miss Erickson, if the door placard was to be believed, looked at him and stopped typing. You know that you can't possibly be a candidate for work on Cimbrian, don't you? Your diabetes alone disqualifies you from participation in Scotch Creek's program, as well as pretty much every company currently operating in any space capacity, including ours. It says in your application that you'd applied to most of those places as well. So why bother? Better chance of getting into space than if I never applied at all, Frank replied. True. Still, not much of a chance, though. Miss Erickson seemed to be appraising him before speaking further. You don't qualify for any of our programs, Mr. Clark. The application has a list right on page four, at least half a page long, of disqualifying ailments. Diabetes is the third one down. You can't have missed it. Again, she gave him that appraising look. For a brief moment, despite what she had just said, Frank thought she might be about to offer him a job. Why did you apply here? Same reason I just told you about Scotch Creek and all the other corporations, Frank replied, inwardly exasperated. No, you misunderstand my question. Why do you want to go into space, and why are you so desperate to go? It wasn't a question he'd expected to be asked. Even though he had some vague ideas bubbling under the surface of his thoughts, He'd written that he wanted to be a colonist, start a new life on another world, but that wasn't really the truth. It was all he could think that these companies might want to hear, so he'd written it. I... I don't know. Can I have a second to collect my thoughts, please? Take your time. Frank mulled it over. Aware that despite her claims that he was unqualified, his answer might actually buy his ticket through a wormhole. You remember me telling you I was in Vietnam, right? Yes. I never got a shot off. That explosion that put shrapnel in my head? It was my tenth day in Vietnam. Just driving in a convoy, right flash, sharp pain, and then I was in a hospital bed three days later. Never even saw the guy who shot at me. Don't even know what it was he shot my truck with. I always regretted never getting a shot off. Not making a difference. You want to go into space because you think you'll be able to take your shot? To kill for humanity? Her tone was flat. Unreadable. God, no, it was... It was that I never got to help. I don't follow. Frustrated, Frank reorganized his thought process. See, I I didn't get drafted. I volunteered straight out of high school. I wanted to help, you know, all all the posters, the ads, the stories on the radio of the Korean War when I was a kid. I wanted to do my part, even though I 
I didn't want to kill people, so I joined. We played army for a bit, and then they stuck me on a plane over the Pacific with my rifle and a duffel bag. I was fucking terrified. When that plane landed, a few of the draft guys refused point-blank to get out. They got dragged off to some brig or something, but not me. I stood up, legs shaking like a baby taking his first steps, ready to go do what I said I'd do for my country and my brothers. A pained look crossed Frank's face, making him look even older than he felt in that moment. But just ten days in, before I'd even seen the enemy and just driving a truck with nothing more exciting in it than some dirty uniforms being taken to the laundry, I see a bright flash, a bang, and wake up with bandages covering half my head. Frank looked down, unable to look the woman in the eyes any longer. He'd only ever told this story to one other person because of how deeply it shamed him. I never got to help. I see. Miss Erickson didn't laugh or give a pitying look or give him an amused expression that told him he was too late in life for a second chance like this. She just looked at him, expressionless, studying his face, like she was trying to look past it and see deeper into his intentions. Do you think you deserve the second chance? Startled, Frank again made eye contact with the woman. Deserve? I don't know that I deserve anything. But I'm damn well gonna try for my second chance as hard as I can before I let anyone tell me it won't ever happen. Miss Erickson raised her eyebrows at this, but didn't comment. Sitting in silence, she began to type again on her keyboard. Frank sat motionless, afraid he'd just blown it, but not wanting to risk any more words in case he was wrong. She grabbed the folder with his application in it and added a few papers from one of her drawers. Then, after printing off several pages from her computer, added these to the folder as well. She stood up from her desk and, manners ingrained into him by his mother, Frank heaved forward onto his feet as well earning him a small smile from Miss Erickson, which he apprehensively returned. You don't need to stand, Mr. Clark. Wait here, please. Then she left, leaving Frank to wonder if he'd ruined the interview somehow. Minutes passed in silence in the office, with the nervous occupant fidgeting slightly. Frank sat, trying to keep his nagging thoughts at bay. You're too old to be of any use, and you know it. Imagine if you went into diabetic shock up there. You'd be a liability. What possible use could they have for you in the future? You still listen to music on a record player. Hardly a member of the future of humanity. After what felt like an hour, there was a knock on the door, and a young man poked his head in through the door, too young to be anyone of importance in the company. Ah, Frank thought. Here's an intern to tell me. Sorry, sir, you're not quite the man we're looking for, but thanks for coming in. But the kid, barely nineteen from the looks of him, said, Miss Erickson sent me to take you upstairs? Uh, would you follow me, please? Clamping down on the sharp stab of hope that shot through him, and instead assuming what he hoped was a dignified walk, Frank followed the kid down a hallway and around a few turns until they reached an elevator. The kid seemed to be a bit excited, based off of how he kept shifting from side to side in front of the door. I never get to use this elevator, he said nervously. He produced an ID badge and held it near the elevator doors, which slid open. Frank followed wordlessly into the elevator. He felt the subtle shift of the elevator that meant they were moving, and quickly, too. The ride took about a minute, and Frank felt both his ears pop before the doors opened to show a man sitting behind a much larger desk than Miss Erickson's, who happened to be sitting in a chair near the man. Ah, how's it going, Frank? Heard a lot about you from my psych profiler, Jennifer, he said, while pointing at Miss Erickson. Anyways, Frank, my name is Moses Byron. I'd like to offer you a job. All right, guys, quick one here today. I know it's not uh, all that long, but, uh, you know, you could get this entire block one, 
two, three, and four chapters of MIA if you head on over to Zren's Patreon, which will be popping up here just momentarily. Uh Uh-huh, and go ahead and click on that, and that will take you to the Patreon, and you can get all four of those chapters at once. You don't have to wait for the next two. No, not at all. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for uh, listening. I love you. I appreciate you. Tell me, what is the average airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Bye, y'all.